What's the most puzzling dream you've ever had? Want to know what it means? Well, so do Chris Gethard and Gary Richardson. That's why they've teamed up with the likes of Wyatt Cenac, Bobby Moynihan, and Aparna Nancherla to take a crack at figuring out your most bizarre nightly musings in their new improv comedy podcast, In Your Dreams, on Earwolf. Though their conclusions might be questionable, their attempts to unravel the mysteries of the dream world are definitely hilarious. Subscribe to In Your Dreams on iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Play. from there now I'm here. <laughs> I heard this lady behind me talking to the flight attendant about what I thought was her window shade. <laughs> and I thought her window shade must be broken. What a shame for her. <laughs> Moments later. <laughs> attendant says to me, sir, would you mind lowering your window? The lady in the back would like to lower. Why didn't she tell me? What about me? I had to do some serious self-reflection. What about me made this woman think, well, I can't ask him to do it. What, are you kidding me? No, I'm gonna get a third party <laughs> to ask him, and then I guess the fireworks will begin. <laughs> did I close my window shade? Yes, I did. <laughs> so I'm a decent person. I thought, this lady, she's in some horrible world of her own making. <laughs> I can be generous and close the window shade. But she has to live in her own brain forever. <laughs> Can you think about her face? <laughs> to live in that woman's brain? <laughs> Wouldn't it be fun to go inside a human brain? <laughs> to be tiny enough to walk around in it? <laughs> There was this place in Philadelphia where I am from called the Franklin Institute. It's a science museum for kids of all ages. One of their exhibits was a gigantic human heart that you could walk through that I remember as a child was very cramped and small. <laughs> so I can't even imagine what it would be like if you were over three feet tall. <laughs> it's like we could have made it bigger, but you would walk through and you they would have gra <laughs> not, not graffiti on the wall. <laughs> really helpful information that we're not supposed to be there. Like somebody took some spray paint and was like, this is what ventricles do. <laughs> but the, the truly horrifying thing about walking inside this human heart, which is something straight out of Edgar Allan Poe. Right? <laughs> the truly terrifying thing about the inside of this human heart was how much like urine it smelled. <laughs> How, how did 
anyone accomplish this? There was not room to do that. And then let me tell you something. The heart was very busy. A lot of traffic in and out. I don't know who got in there and was like, nobody else? No one else in this human heart? I guess I, I guess I know what I have to do. And I went through this thing countless times and every time it smelled like urine. So that meant it was happening a lot. It wasn't just once and they're like, oh, we can't find it. Of course we want to scrub it out of here. We can't find it. It could be anywhere in the bloodstream. Oh, I heard that they tore down the heart of the Franklin Institute to make rent to forget. <laughs> Can I tell you something? It wasn't gonna be worth it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spontaneous Nation. With us. where I invite someone of note to have a free-form conversation with me inspired by a blind question from our previous episode's guest. Then I invite some improviser pals onto the stage to do a narrative improv with me that's one continuous story as opposed to unconnected scenes. And it is all scored on piano by Mr. Evan Schlepp. <laughs> A wonderful show for you tonight. I'm glad that you're all here because I'm going to welcome our improvisers to the stage as we do with the live version of the show. We bring the improvisers out first. First, 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 first. first. Please welcome to the stage Chelsea Clark. go to college? Oh, I went to, I made a mistake. <laughs> Who didn't? I went to Marymount Manhattan College, which is fine. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, I think that it, it, when I was in a senior in high school, Google had just, it had been out for a while, but I wasn't like using it yet. And I definitely did not like research what college I was going to go to. I think I've researched, you know, like, a purse I was going to buy more than what college I went to. It was even before Google, and I'm from that time, if you can imagine that. <laughs> like, I remember researching colleges was a thing that was done. Right. <laughs> right, right, right. I think I did get a couple brochures, and then I just, I think I gave up. <laughs> and then I was like, this one feels right. And then, like, maybe the first day I was like, oops, this is not the one. But I stuck to it. What, was, what was it that made you realize I made a mistake? Well, I, no one liked me. <laughs> and I was, it's okay, now everyone does. <laughs> um, but I was like, well, this will be the place I find my people. And high, I was killing it in high school, had lots killing of friends. It. It. But I, I, like, didn't, over, I didn't get over that inertia of, like, getting friends in, in a in college and I should have been like, this is maybe not the place. Also, I don't, I didn't live in the dorms there. That's probably the way in to friendship. <laughs> As it often is. If you share walls with someone. Right. Yeah. What, how, did you complete your matriculation? I did. I did. Because I think that's kind of the, the big thing about college is like, could, can you finish something? <laughs> It's not even what you get your degree in. Right. It's like, if someone cares if you went to college, they're just like, oh, they'll, they'll do something I tell them to do, probably, right? That's what... <laughs> I never realized what a double-edged sword that was, because it's the first time you were truly making your own decisions. Right. Unless you have uh, overbearing parents who control I every don't. aspect of your life. They didn't. Oh, you don't? No. Okay. So, on the, when I had that realization, that was when I dropped out of college. <laughs> And I was like, oh, I'm in charge of this. Where did you go first? I went to Temple University. Ooh. <laughs> Never heard of it. <laughs> uh, 
Well, I'm not, I'm not the most famous uh, <laughs> that, that honor belongs to someone else. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I was there for about a semester. About a semester. Oh. I dropped out. I also went to then grad school for, for one semester. That's where I had like figured it out. Right. You don't want to, for, for art, which you don't do. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> because, because unless you want to teach like art, painting or something, you really should just paint instead of um, going to school for it. I guess. Right. You can really cut out the middleman. Right? <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> You don't need a degree. Any more school in your future? Oh, um, I might want to try uh, kickboxing classes. Sure. <laughs> Chelsea Clark, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for having me. Are you, where are you from? Outside Philly, Malvern. That's right. Oh, well. so what? I, I've been inside, <laughs> I've been inside that heart. You have been inside that heart? Yeah, when I was a kid. And it smelled like urine, I right? don't remember. I think I just was excited to be inside a heart, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember the, yeah. Are you the one that peed in that heart? <laughs> yes. Uh, but it was very small and cramped, right? I think so, yeah. I don't remember, I have such a bad memory. That's all I remember from the Franklin Institute, though, was the heart. Do you remember they had the different... No. <laughs> Shannon asked and answered, moving on. <laughs> have you ever seen Inside a Human Body? Inside? Yeah. Um, I've seen, I've been to that exhibit, uh, the muscles, all the... Um, body world? Body, body works. works. That was like, well, I went when it first opened, it was only supposed to be there for two months. <laughs> now it's still there, I think. <laughs> Held over. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen that. I don't think I've seen inside a human body. No. Man, I wish I had. I wish I had. Have you ever cut yourself very badly and then seen like, oh, too much? Oh, um, I dropped a, like a shears, like you know, like a limb whopper. Yeah. And I, I don't know what I was doing. I'm having the opposite reaction. Of yeah. I don't, I don't know why this is so exciting to me. I forget why. I forget, I was sitting on the ground outside, uh, behind my house. I forget what I was doing, but I, I, maybe they just slipped and I dropped them. And they hit me like right here. And like a little bit of, it like, like popped out. But it wasn't like, I didn't get stitches or anything though. I just was like, oh, that's weird. And I think I just popped it back in. <laughs> Probably was not. I was only supposed to use the limb loppers. Like if I asked my mom, I had to get permission to use them. I just loved cutting down. <laughs> I just loved it. The feeling of just like when you snap a limb. It's great. It's great. Yeah. You might want to take a kickboxing class. <laughs> Shannon O'Neill, ladies and gentlemen. Multiple beverages. There's so many things. There's so many things, and I was taught to never waste food. So I'm gonna, if there's stuff, I'm gonna take it. But did, I'm gonna take it. Did you also feel that in the green room, people would just abscond with it, like people that aren't supposed to be here? Would come I don't, I don't worry about those kind of things. That's not what I'm worried about. You're just worried I'm about what's right in front. Exactly. Of I've got carrots and cucumbers. They must be eaten. There's booze. It must be drank. Who cares what? Who cares what else? I don't. I don't want anybody else to have to deal with that. It's a very simple yeah. philosophy. Yeah. If there's a problem, I take care of it, and I think booze is a big problem. <laughs> yeah. 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 You want to eradicate it the old-fashioned way. Absolutely. I mean, there's there's so much of it, and people keep making it, so I've got to keep drinking it. <laughs> it's un, It's unreal. What's the drunkest you've ever been? Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> 
like for real? Like that I remember? No, make one up. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it had to be, uh, it was spring 2006 and rap music was big. <laughs> I don't know. I know uh, one time in college, I got drunk and blacked out and woke up and all my laundry was done. <laughs> Did you go to one of those colleges that had elves? <laughs> no, there was a lot of, uh, I went to like an art school, so I didn't see them, but they may have been there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's kind of their thing. <laughs> what kind of art were you studying? Uh, I was a theater major. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yes, born and bred. I know how to use the diaphragm. I speak from here. Will you be playing it this evening? Absolutely. Are you doing it right now? Why, yes, I am. <laughs> Gary Richardson, ladies and gentlemen. for an advertisement when we return we will meet our special guests see you on the other side the harold ramus film school part of the second city in chicago it is the first film school in the world dedicated entirely to comedic storytelling this year-long program exposes students to comedy theory the ins and outs of comedy film production screenwriting improv and master seminars where students have the opportunity to learn from entertainment professionals at the top of their careers harold ramus loved collaborative filmmaking and utilizing the improvisation skills he learned during his time at the second city and this method of creation will be used during the entire program the Second City is the alma mater of such comedic greats as Tina Fey, Bill Murray, Stephen Colbert, and current SNL cast members Cecily Strong, A.D. Bryant, and Vanessa Bayer. The deadline to apply for the fall session is February 1st. Only 15 students will be chosen. The film school accepts applications on a rolling basis. New students start every three months. The Harold Ramis Film School is for anyone with a love of comedy and content creation. Doesn't matter if you're just graduating high school or looking for a change in career. People of all experience levels and backgrounds are encouraged to apply and and scholarships are available. For more information, visit their website, RamusFilmSchool.com. That's R-A-M-I-S FilmSchool.com. Welcome back to Star <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our guest this evening is a singer, a songwriter, and a singer-songwriter. <laughs> Please welcome Rhett Miller! <laughs> Rhett, how are you doing? Uh, I'm well, thank you very much, Paul. Glad to hear it. Now, you and I, full disclosure, we've known each other for quite some Long time. time. The 90s. We were young, and I was dumb. <laughs> and full of <laughs> hope for the future. <laughs> yes, Red and I have known each other since the 1990s. Rap music was big. <laughs> Red, I have a question for you. Okay. Provided to us by our previous episode's guest. Are you curious as to the identity of our previous episode's guest? Well, you know, I'm a long-time listener to Spontanea Nation, mm -hmm. so I know that no matter how much I beg you, all you're going to do is tell me to get a subscription to Howl. That's true. <laughs> but, but, I mean, right, you know why I do that. It's because they pay for a you. very reasonable price. <laughs> I, I, well, I guess I don't get to have fun tonight. <laughs> Red, I have a question from our previous episode's guest, and that question is, how did the movie The Sandlot affect your life? <laughs> if you haven't seen it, what is the medical condition that prevented you? <laughs> Very specific question. Very specific question. <laughs> have you seen the movie The Sandlot? I don't think so, but... <laughs> turn into a Frankenstein mob here. <laughs> Guy hasn't seen a shitty movie. 
but I, I got two small kids, mm-hmm. so a lot of stuff happens where I'm sort of aware, like Gary's laundry, like this, I may have seen it. <laughs> what? I don't know what that is. I was just saying, is that a show? <laughs> His laundry got done while oh, the... Wow. the <laughs> Gary's laundry. I've heard stuff happen on this show where people are out here and they say something and somebody's backstage and they don't hear it and then Paul's like, what, you weren't listening? Well, Paul. (laughs) You're right there. Hold on a second. This this is a false premise. (laughs) Right, y'all? You can't can't invent an issue to do a gotcha with (laughs) you. I don't know why I'm being so mean to you. I, I don't you. either, Rex. <laughs> Tell me about the fucking sandlot. <laughs> I guess my question is, can you help me remember what that movie even was? I, here, I've never seen it. Okay. Here's all I know. <laughs> Brett, it was great having you. That is our show. <laughs> now look, now look. When I was a child, I thought as a child and I acted like a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. I know you like the Sandlot from when you were a wee bitty baby. You don't have to still like it. It's fine to let go of it. Now, I haven't seen the film in question, but I know it's a piece of shit. <laughs> All right. It's about, it's about some neighborhood kids playing some Sandlot baseball. So did I get it, guys? I think there's either and or a mean old man and a mean dog in the movie. Am I close? Yeah. Yeah. All right. There, I've saved myself some time. I don't have to watch the Sandlot. I have a kid that plays baseball in real life. <laughs> Turn on them. I love all of y'all too. I really do. <laughs> this is terrifying. <laughs> what's, some, what's a movie like that from your childhood? Because I would say you probably have not seen that movie because you, it was probably after your time. I'm guessing. I really have no... This is a podcast of two guys who haven't seen a movie talking about the movie. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have no idea when it came out. I'm assuming it was 90s? 90, 93. Thank you. 93. <laughs> In 1993, I was starting a little band called Old 97. <laughs> That was so cheap and shitty. I, yeah, so, but my point is that I don't remember fucking anything. Like, for instance, I was on stage in 1993 covering a song by the Cramps during the encore, and I put, like, Lux Interior, the great New York band, Lux Interior used to put the microphone in his mouth and go, <laughs> and I put, well, what? It was awesome, and I did that. He also put it down. what he did, though, when he put it in his mouth? Yeah, he went, <laughs> and I also, uh, he also used to, <laughs> Was He'd be like, ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, oh. And then he put the microphone down his spandex pants. Sure. And then he'd pull it out and he'd kind of deep throat it. And it was, dude, Erg a music war. You guys have seen the sand lot and you haven't seen Erg a music war? Oh my god. Okay. Thank you. So okay, so 1990. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> 1993, Encore, Old 97s, it's our first year. We're playing for tips in a jar. It's a, uh, it's a- Did like, people come up to you and say, man, what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah. it's a, was, it, was there anyone dressed nautically? <laughs> if only. Um, so I put the microphone in my mouth, doing the cramp song, and, uh, when I pulled the mic out, one of my teeth popped out. But get, get this, I didn't fucking care. I'm just still singing and like, oh, there's blood. Still singing, blood coming out. It was really cool. And so I did not see the sandlot. So 
fish and that prevented you was, was you were tooth. pulling teeth out of your own hand. <laughs> 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 What's something from your childhood that you you cherish to this day, like a movie, a piece of entertainment? The Jerk was really big. Yeah. Yeah. And I recently showed it to my kids. It was They were even younger, clearly, because every minute they're fucking older. It's a nightmare. Um, but this is, a, <laughs> this is a couple of years ago yet, so now they're 10 and 13. They would have been at like 8 and 11. It's weird how inappropriate that movie is. Yeah. <laughs> and like even all movies, not just that movie, like E.T. First scene of E.T., they're smoking, uh, they're playing D&D, &D, which is, nobody plays that anymore, do they? You, play, you must have played D&D. &D. I tried it, but I didn't, I didn't like it because it felt so passive to me. Uh -huh. Like, are we really playing a thing? This guy just seems to be telling us what's going on. <laughs> I, I would rather be staging fake sword fights with wiffle bats outside. So LARP. You were more of a LARP. I was more of a LARP. Like a LARP. <laughs> we, didn't have, we didn't know that was a term at the time. But the jerk, it went over well, and my kids are fine. They're, they're not... <laughs> they're fine. They understand. Our, our parents used to take us to wildly inappropriate movies. Oh, like uh, Porky's, probably? No, well... <laughs> <laughs> They took us to see, like, frightening movies, like, like disaster movies, you know, like oh. Towering Inferno and stuff like that. But we were tiny children. We should not have been there. But I, I don't remember there being any incident. I think we were perfectly happy to be watching the Towering Inferno. Yeah. Watch, I was very sad when Roddy McDowell fell to his death. <laughs> Spoiler That was beside an adventure. I'm very sorry. sorry. <laughs> don't look for the death of Roddy McDowell in the Towering Inferno. You will be disappointed. <laughs> Have you had that experience where there was a thing you loved as a kid and you revisited as an adult and you realized, oh no, this is not good? Um, huh. Well, there, uh, I loved a lot of records in the 80s where the production was, um, upon further review, <laughs> very suspect. <laughs> like, um, you know, uh, there was a band out of Scotland called Aztec Camera mm -hmm. and um, Roddy Frame was the lead singer, not McDowell. Um, and, <laughs> And he was an incredible guitar player, and he could play like flamenco, kind of. It was, which doesn't sound good, but believe me, it was actually quite good in the context of their music. And yet, the production—it was these big gated snares, which I don't know, Evan, you know about this, right? It's like a, like a, it, it triggers triggers a fake noise where you would normally hear the perfectly fine sound of a snare drum, and instead you hear, and uh, and then those keyboard pads, which oh my God, I knew a rec uh, band from Dallas. Shallow Rain made a record and they gave it over. They finished it. It was a rock record a la, they were super into the Pretenders first record. So they made the record, they finish it. They think they're done. The producer takes it off. He says, okay, well, let's meet up to mix in a week. During that week. Good producer yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for, for the listener, uh, Red did that Jeremy Piven thing with his hand. <laughs> that thing that I always associate with Jeremy Piven for some reason. Like, well, we'll meet up just because it's a week. It was, it was a very simple shift, but it was, it was perfect. Um, during that week, he added uh, keyboard pads. Not just keyboards, because keyboards, Evan, no, don't get offended, uh, are fine, but keyboard pads where you just take the whole record and you add like this bed of like creamy keyboards underneath, which in the 80s was a really popular sound, but we immediately realized after the fact that, oh, that's a bad idea. So they showed back up for mixing, Shallow Rain did, and uh, their record, which was supposed to sound like, uh, paint the flowers all black, which is not the pretenders, I know, that's, oh, that's a Shallow Rain song, um, <laughs> was, uh, it suddenly sounded a lot like, I don't know, Phil Collins. <laughs> did that answer your question? I forgot. I don't remember, I don't remember what my question was. <laughs> What are your kids into now that, that you can appreciate and that you cannot appreciate? Uh, my daughter's into Taylor Swift, which don't boo before you get upset. You know, we're in Brooklyn. <laughs> Taylor, Taylor Swift's not super popular here. Um, I was against it too until my daughter sat me down and made me listen to it. And at one point, she was like playing song after song and she looks over at me and she goes, are you crying? <laughs> It's just that someday you'll be 15 <laughs> and some boy is going to treat you bad. <laughs> and she writes her own songs-ish and um, 
it's whatever. It's I, I can't hold it. She likes music, and like I'm, like I said, I didn't always like the best music. I mean, mostly, but. And, and then my son is really into sneakers, which is weird because for me, my family growing up, we kind of lived on the outskirts of a wealthy part of town. But we had because my grandfather had had money, but he lost all of it. So we grew up with some of the trappings and no money. So, um, well, not no money. And clearly, we had food. But like other kids would have, I remember at the time. Uh, uh, Adidas Stan Smiths were huge, and if you didn't have Adidas Stan Smiths, if you, for instance, had uh, A6 Tigers, that was a disaster. <laughs> if you showed up at school with those shoes on, oh my God! So I begged and begged, and guess what I got? And so, um, so for my son now to have shoes that way better than Stan Smiths, and um, he has them, and uh, I don't know how to, I don't know how to undo it. <laughs> so, the bad parenting just keeps mounting up. I, th I think you're doing okay. Thank you. I think you're doing okay. Thank you. What are some things that you've tried to get them into that they couldn't, they couldn't get into? Uh, well, my both, when my, both of them came to me at an early age and announced, Dad, I don't want to, my son said it first, but, and, uh, and he's the one that'll really stick to it. I don't want to hurt your feelings but there's no way I'm gonna go into music as a profession. <laughs> Which I was fine, I am fine with that. Because when I started, there was the outside chance that you could be mediocre at music and get fucking rich. <laughs> and uh, that apparently is no longer a chance. Or it's, 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 it's on par. <laughs> sure okay, okay, the likelihood though has been greatly diminished. It's on par with like the lottery now. Where it used to be, I don't know, like one in 20 or something. I don't know. Are they, are they making less music now? No, they're making more music, but nobody gives a fuck. The, the level of giving a fuck has gone way down. So, but there's a lot, a lot of music. It's harder to reach people. Bottom line is I've got a lot of young musician friends and I feel terrible for them because it's a really hard time to be starting out in music. So my point is that I was happy to hear my son told me that and that he didn't want to play football. In both of those, I was fine. <laughs> fine. A lot of head trauma in both cases. <laughs> Brett Miller, ladies and gentlemen. Today's show is sponsored by Howl.fm. Start 2017 with a bang with the entirety comedy. With the entirety comedy. Yeah. New words. You guys didn't hear? Oh, 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 you guys, you're way behind the curve. Oh, I'm so sad for you. I'm condescending. Start 2017 with a bang with the entire comedy. Bang, bang. 2016 live tour on Howl. Binge on 36 episodes of the USA, Australia, and England tour featuring myself, Scott Ackerman, Lauren Lapkus, Mike Hanford, John Gabers, and many more guests. These shows were so much fun. There's a ton of them, first of all. We went crazy in a good way. We had a blast on the road, joined by so many special guests along the way. We were It's crazy how the timing worked out, that we had great people uh, in all these different cities across America and North America and Canada, the Canada from Lisa Mattresses. We had so much fun. These episodes are a delight. And you can listen as we remember some of our favorite moments on the road and on the stage in five best of episodes. These were also a delight to behold. <laughs> we had a great time talking about the tour. There's behind the scenes stories. Uh, you'll discover how some characters came to be, um, just what it was like for us to be out there for such a long time, having a great time with each other. Everyone got along. That is over 50 hours of Comedy Bang Bang Live episodes to start your year off. Praba! As MC Hammer said in that Pepsi commercial that I remember from childhood. 
To listen to the CBB 2016 live tour and over 200 hours of exclusive Howl miniseries, go to howl.fm slash spont. And after your full month of free trial, it is only $4.99 per month to get all this exclusive content on iPhone, Android, and on the web. Just go to H-O-W-L dot F-M slash S-P-O-N-T to get started. I'm recording this in a hotel room, and I'm pretty sure the person next to me can hear my unnatural speaking voice. Procure our location from Mr. Rhett Miller. We are ready to begin our improv. But first, just so as you know, in order to aid us in our storytelling, we use three sound effects that move us about in time. Let's say we're in a scene. We want to find out what's happening somewhere else at the exact same time. We use this meanwhile button. Not two, over there. Whoosh. It's red, like stop. What's happening over there? <laughs> the expression that we all use. <laughs> Let's say we need to go into the past for some reason. Someone's having a memory. We're learning how something came to be. We'll use this flash back sound effect. <laughs> that one is funnier than the first one. <laughs> I feel bad this Flashback, so it's yellow, like, let's slow down a second. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, we cannot live in the past forever. We must go forward in time using this flash forward button. Turn us from a flashback or take us into the mysterious future. It's colored green, like, let's go for <laughs> All right. It is now time to reveal our location provided to us by Red Miller, and that location is backstage at a rock club. <laughs> Back <laughs> backstage at a rock club. We take you now to backstage at a rock club. Ooh. I don't know. Last night was not great. <laughs> I feel like we've done better shows and that we've cried less on stage. <laughs> I don't want to point any fingers, but I'm pretty sure someone fell asleep during our concert. But we're not pointing fingers, right? So we don't know. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm not pointing fingers. That's for sure. I'm not. Cool. cool. I'm only looking at one person, though. And that's just to confirm that we both don't know who fell asleep on stage. Well, <laughs> it's for sure to confirm that no fingers are being pointed. Okay. Yeah. That much is for that's locked down. Cool. I agree. <laughs> what what can we do differently tonight, do you think? I think uh, Tony shouldn't fall asleep. <laughs> now Tony, you saw that she actually pointed a finger at her. I'm not saying he's the one that fell asleep last night. <laughs> And I just point at him because there's Tony and there's Tanya, and I get him confused. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, tonight, if none of us fell asleep, but specifically Tony, <laughs> it might be better. Okay. okay that's good. I, that's one thing. I, I felt like that was kind of covered under my note. <laughs> this was a thing that happened that wasn't good. Right, and then I'm just confirming, like, we shouldn't do it again. I, I, <laughs> Elise, I can't fault you for that. You're absolutely yeah. right. Should we take a nap? Yes. Oh. Yes. 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 That would be so great right now. A nap. Okay, we we gotta be on in 20 minutes. Yeah, I was just throwing out 
a suggestion. I liked it, Tanya. I liked it. <laughs> Tony liked it, too. Yeah. I got a book about lucid dreaming. <laughs> and what we could do, maybe, is for at least the first half of the show, be asleep, but I'm doing stuff. I have a... Oh. <laughs> you're saying... You're saying we go out there asleep? <laughs> okay. I like that. That's Because yeah. I, I didn't say... I just said, don't fall asleep. If we're already asleep, we're out there. That works. That works. I like it. Active sleeping. Okay, hold on. Let's, let's talk logistics. All right? Are you saying, Tanya, that we fall asleep now? And then... Together. It has to be together? We have to be in the same dream. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, I don't want to fall asleep later and then I'm not in the same dream as you guys and I'm playing a different song. Well, obviously, <laughs> obviously we all want to be in the same dream. <laughs> but then, do we sleepwalk onto the stage? I only have read... Like, <laughs> The first, let me check. <laughs> also, in case we do this, I want you guys to not be surprised by my dream form. <laughs> what, what's, your, what's your dream form? I'm a six foot eight inch, 245 tight end, like tight end, like 245 pound tight end. At a, You're not 245 tight ends. <laughs> So there's one person, I'm 6'8", I'm 245 pounds, I play tight end for the University of Missouri, I major in journalism there. <laughs> yeah. Is this an actual person that did that one? I hope not. <laughs> I would really hate to like, take over somebody else. Cause I would hate if somebody took over me and made me fall asleep on stage or something. <laughs> That'd be insane. <laughs> It happened before when uh, Tony and I were in a band in college together. It was fucked up. Was it? <laughs> was it really? Hey, hey, I've got a great idea for a song. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. I wrote it down. You want to pick up the bass? Yeah. All right, sweet. <laughs> Sacrifice yourself to me. Tony, what's, is this the song? Yeah. Sacrifice yourself. Give me your soul. Yeah. Oh. Also, Tony, I don't think you're a tight end. I think you're the devil. Yeah. <laughs> like, I didn't hear anything about journalism. <laughs> When I, he was like, yeah. he, it was like a roid, he was like roid raging. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. Could you, would you mind just like, just like drawing a picture of what your dream form looks like? Oh, absolutely. Well, I've actually, um, I've been dabbling in watercolor, so I've got... <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> um. Oh. That's, um... Uh, that's really scary, Tony. <laughs> it's really scary. Yeah, could you imagine being a linebacker and trying to guard that guy? <laughs> no, no. Also, you shouldn't roll up watercolor paper. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to go. Yeah, I'll tell you what, you don't have to go to school to know that. <laughs> Well, my dream form's kind of harmless and cute. Wait, it's, you have a dream form too? Yeah, it's me on the top and a goat on the bottom. <laughs> like a fawn? A full goat? Like you're just standing on a goat? <laughs> Dream form is 
just you. Our goat. Me and the goat. Yeah. And the goat. Like, is it a regular sized goat? Um, yeah, it's a big goat. <laughs> big, big for a goat, but not. Big for a goat, which okay. is smaller than a donkey. Uh, <laughs> pretty small. Um, yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why. I meant to ask the woman at the dream bookshop uh, what that was, but she was very busy. Uh, and we've got, you know, it. it... What was she? <laughs> what was she so busy doing? Last week I had a, a dream, and I, I wanted to maybe know if you knew the meaning of the dream. I didn't write the book, you gotta buy it. I can't. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what's happening. Everyone's been coming in here and I'm just telling them what's in the books, and I'm not selling them. And then I can't sell books and I can't feed my cocaine daddy. <laughs> and only I know where the books are. Like, I put them in a special way. Yeah, yeah, I would recommend uh, <laughs> If you just did it alphabetical by author, you could have a, an assistant or an intern do it. No, I just do it my way, and then no one can steal them because they come in to steal specific books. Yeah, yeah. Give that book about how uh, throwing shit away makes your life better. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have a dream form? I, I don't. I don't. I don't. I mean, I don't really fully fall asleep. Never. <laughs> I sleep like a. I sleep like a dolphin. So like one eye open, and then I just walk in a circle. <laughs> so I rest half my brain at a time, so I'm never fully asleep. You don't even lay down. No. What? I could. I, I could die. <laughs> you ever seen a dolphin lay down? <laughs> oh my when god. When they're dead. Yeah. <laughs> right? You've never there. seen a dolphin laying down. Yeah, when they like jump up on the edge of the pool. <laughs> oh, oh right, when they're being tortured. <laughs> they're, they're balancing more than yeah, laying down. That's I mean, to be fair. True. Okay, true. then I haven't. I, I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, I don't have one because I never. I never fully fall asleep. Does so that ever cause? My answer. Does that ever cause problems? The fact that you never fully fall asleep and you walk around in a circle with one eye open. Yeah, yeah, I guess like if I fall, if I'm like, uh, well, planes. Sure. Oh, sure. Yeah, I'm always getting yelled at by the, the stewardesses. Mm -hmm. Stewards, <laughs> don't insult them. <laughs> um, you did know. the insult. We didn't, we're not in trouble for insulting them. We, none of us said. No, no, that was me telling my one part of my brain to Oh, gosh. Right. Because, <laughs> you know, we're not always awake at the same time. Right. So, the, yeah. the two halves of your brain. Exactly. I see. Yeah, so I'm just reminding the other half, don't say stewardess. Cool. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, airplanes are hard because, you know, when I want to fall asleep, I get up and I start walking in a circle. <laughs> it's got to be a real tight circle. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it is. I mean, when I used to be able to go into the cockpit, it was a lot easier, but now <laughs> You used to go into the cockpit? Yeah, pre-9-11, I was always in the cockpit. <laughs> Captain speaking, we are beginning our descent into Dallas Fort Worth. Hold on one second. Oh, uh, can we help you? Just taking a nap, just taking a nap. Any, any last minute drinks before we clear everything away and lock it up? Um, yeah, I'll have a, can I get a milk and cranberry? <laughs> I'll have a, I'll have a vodka gin. <laughs> hey Roy, mm -hmm. should we be concerned about that woman who's... 
will be in tight circles behind us in the cockpit. Uh, don't worry about me. Guess not. I guess not. Guess not. Oh, hey. Guess what day it is? It wasn't like one. It's true. It was going to, yeah. It was a plane going to Dallas, Fort Worth. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just a coincidence. Yeah. Just a coincidence. So I thought it was, but I always remember, like, that was my final. Yeah. <laughs> we should storm the cockpit, but there's that woman. <laughs> On one of those planes, I, I would have stopped it. <laughs> it's easy to say yeah, that now. Say that. Say that. No, there's no way. Yeah. Wait, Polly, what are your dreams about? Or what is your dream form? Or do you sleep regular? <laughs> I'll answer your questions in order. <laughs> My dreams are mostly. Um, about me trying to find something I can't find. Mm -hmm. And I'm very frustrated. I'm looking all over the place and I yeah. can't find the thing that I'm supposed to find. I don't even know what it is. Mm -hmm. I just know I'm supposed to find something. Mm -hmm. My dream form? Yes. Um, it's like me, but like up here. <laughs> yeah. So it's like me, but like standing on the balls of my feet, but in the dream form, I'm not standing on the balls of my feet. Your I'm just naturally, my legs are a little bit longer. Yeah. <laughs> And then, <laughs> do I sleep regular? I mean, I don't know, what's regular, would you say? I'd say, uh, I don't know, six to eight hours of sleep at night. Whoa. <laughs> Get a load of this guy. <laughs> six to eight hours? I wish. I'd sleep an hour every day <laughs> at 2 p.m. <laughs> Like Edison. Who? <laughs> Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison. You guys never heard of that guy? <laughs> Everywhere I go, I reference him and no one knows who I'm talking about. Yeah, I know Thomas Edison, quarterback for the Mizzou Tigers. <laughs> Last week, he went 28 for 35, 377 yards in the air. 22 yards on the ground, four rushing touchdowns. Guy from Mon Thomas Alva Edison? What, is that his middle name? I had no clue. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. I, wow, in, in the air? In the air. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a demon. Did you happen to paint any pictures of him? Um, I took a picture. I was walking past a church and they made a picture in the windows there. There's like a bunch of different colored glass that they put together Stain to glass. make it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Scrolling through the pictures. Mm -hmm. oh. That's him, right? Um, that looks like another devil. <laughs> And it was on a church that uh, yeah. was, a, was a stained glass of a devil on a church. <laughs> well, I grew up on a church. It was a well. I walked past, and the church was on my right. I turned, and the building turned black. <laughs> Football in there? <laughs> that sounds like a fraternity house. No, it's kind of 
kind of the place that I go to worship, yeah. <laughs> I go to worship, for sure. Tony, just des describe to you the rules of a football game. Oh, <laughs> well, just tell yourself. Tell yourself. Describe to you. It should be out loud or it should be internal. Yeah, we'll wait over here. <laughs> I don't know why I assumed you'd do it out loud. <laughs> wake up, you put on your uniform, okay. a, a thick black velvet robe. <laughs> you go to the Upper West Side, there's a penthouse there. You go up to the 13th floor, but you have to go to the 14th floor on the elevator and take the stairs down one floor. Then you go out, you go into this apartment, number seven. There's going to be a couple there. The man's going to be wearing a robe also. You go in, the lady has just given birth. <laughs> there is placenta and amniotic fluid everywhere. Far more than from one birth. You put things together, you say, huh, I think there was, I don't know, 100 births? <laughs> you look around, there's babies that have grown up, but they haven't left the room. So all they know is this one room. And the room is Yes. Are the babies just bigger or they're now children? <laughs> that was my question too. Yeah. Uh, so the babies have grown up, so is it just is it a lot of children or is it just big babies? Uh, well, they are one and the same. They're children because of their age. So they're anywhere from the age of the, the newborn, the fresh fluid, to I'd say 13 years old. Yeah, and they're all in this room. The room's big. The room has a wooden floor. Stones on the wall. <laughs> the room has no electricity, it's only fires. But like small, like not even on the wall, it's like small little campfires around the room. So you can only see these warrior children via that. <laughs> yes. So when you get off at the 14th floor, yeah. was did you did it stop at a 13th floor and you're just not allowed to get out? Or oh do yeah. You have to. Is there just no? Like, do you have to turn a key to yeah. get to the 13th floor, or yeah. is it just it's not on the, the it's not on the menu of the elevator? It's not. It's not is that what the they call it? The menu of the elevator? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you get to the elevator, you're like, hmm, I'll have one 14th floor, please. <laughs> yeah. Get up there. Get out. There's a door right once you get off the 14th floor. There's nothing on the 14th floor except for this door. Mm. That door leads to stairs. You can only go down to the 13th floor. You can only go down? The stairs yeah. don't go back up. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, there's constantly, you remember the character that Ellen Page played in Inception? Inception, yes. There's constantly one of those in there, so when you take a step down, you look back, and it's like, oh wait, this is different. This isn't the same. Somebody's changing this. Yeah. Is that constantly an Ellen Page? Yeah, an Ellen Page type. Oh. So we're talking, you know, like an MC five, four. Type. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. What did you say? I said yes before I, I didn't really. <laughs> I bet the answer is yes. She says like okay. an MC Escher drawing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just like that. And, and, and that's football. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, that does sound like football. Yeah. <laughs> just a bunch of babies in a room. Yeah, with campfires all over the place. Like fire, just like placentas and the everywhere. Floor. The rules yeah. are so complicated. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Well, guys, we got uh, one minute till showtime. Oh. Oh. So, I guess we're yeah. taking that nap. <laughs> Oh no. We're at the lucid dream. We're gonna have to do it. Oh boy. Okay, well you're the expert, Tanya. Okay. So what do we do? Um alright. We we all join hands. Okay. Alright. Okay. Um and we uh, <laughs> I, I guess any of us could read it. But 
we all have to focus on one thing to count. Okay. Um, and then the first person who starts to dream has to just tell everybody else <laughs> what to start thinking about. And then... Uh, so I'll think of one thing to count and you'll think of something else? <laughs> no, we all... Yes. <laughs> yeah, we all have to think of a different thing to count. Okay. But then the first person who starts dreaming has to immediately give everyone else a heads up. Okay. <laughs> and then... <laughs> And then once we're all in the same dream world, we'll all see each other. So that'll be, if one person's not there, we maybe, you know, tell the other person a little bit more so that they can get there and then boom, we're doing it. <laughs> okay, simple enough. <laughs> so who should start? Okay, I'm gonna start counting something. Okay, I'll start counting. And can I also apologize for crying a bunch yesterday? <laughs> Apology accepted. <laughs> concert at 2 p.m. <laughs> I am wide awake. I mean, get to the subway, get to the subway! <laughs> he's not telling us, he's dreaming! What, what, are you, what are you seeing, Tony? Tony, what are you seeing? <laughs> I'll have uh, two six inch meatballs <laughs> 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 Now that you have swiped in, you may have any, a sandwich of any cheese made of any mammal. Great one. Hmm. Uh, I guess if I could have any mammal, any sandwich of my choosing, yes. I'll have two six inch meatballs. <laughs> Wow, he, he looks happy. He looks really he's happy. Looking. <laughs> he's looking he's at the people. <laughs> I mean, I guess so. Oh my god. It's real messy. It's so it's messy. messy. It's like an ice cream cone. I guess. Well, it's so <laughs> sexual. It's a lot of You know what, though? It's not too sexual. Essentially, it's sensual. <laughs> well, guess we better get on stage. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we'll see how Tony plays while he's sucking off a Mikon song. <laughs> Snapchat. <laughs> I saw it on Brooklyn Vegan. <laughs> you mean you're supposed hey. to be up there? Yeah, um... Don't tell anybody what I was doing. Well, we're all... we can all see you. <laughs> Huge crowd of people, we're yeah, all watching. Yeah, we're yeah. just the only ones talking to you. Okay, let's... Like, you can hear a pin drop in this... <laughs> in this concert hall. Okay, well... I shame easily, so let's pretend like only us know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the show. Glad you guys came out. It's not good. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay. Um think we could have done different. <laughs>
The Harold Ramis Film School in Chicago is accepting applications for their year-long program. The Harold Ramis Film School, part of the Second City in Chicago, is the first film school in the world dedicated entirely to comedic storytelling. The Harold Ramis Film School is for anyone with a love of comedy and comedy.